Welcome to the Australian Finance Podcast, a podcast for people who want to learn more about their personal finances and get the most from their money. This series is hosted by Kate Campbell from How To Money and Owen Raskovich from Rask Finance. The Australian Finance Podcast is provided for educational purposes only. The information is general in nature and does not take into account your needs, goals or objectives. What that means is the information does not apply to you specifically. So consider getting the advice of a licensed and trusted professional before acting on the information. Kate, welcome back to the Australian Finance Podcast. Yes, today we're going to be talking about listed investment companies, otherwise known as LICs. LICs. Okay, so L-I-C is not L-I-C-K. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no Good looking o. anybody. Yeah, nice. So these are pretty popular on the ASX, the Australian Stock Exchange. And some people might weigh them up beside like managed funds or ETFs mm. um, and index funds. They might be thinking LICs sound very similar to those things. Yeah. But they're a little bit different, right? Mm. Okay. Do you, want, do you want to explain what a lick is or do you want me to explain it? Oh, I'll, I'll give it a go that you okay. can jump in. So sure. we're talking about a company that's listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, which is the major market in Australia for buying and selling shares. And instead of being just a privately traded company where you can't really access it, it's publicly traded where you can buy and sell shares in the company. And the company itself then invests in it could be shares. I think they can invest in all sorts of different yeah, things whatever, yeah, yeah. underneath whatever they want to. Um, and you can buy and sell shares in that company without actually having to buy and sell the underlying assets. Okay. So let's imagine, because um, I find these are really good to get use an example mm. because we're about to talk about two different types of prices. So let's imagine I give you $10,000 and then you go invest that in some shares. Mm. I could actually invest in the structure or the way that they're held and that those things that you manage instead of the actual underlying investments, right? Yeah. So I'm paying for not only the investments that are inside the thing, but also your skill, mm-hmm. right? And those things have two different prices, right? There's the price of like you and the assets, which is what we call the, the share price of the listed investment company. Mm. And then there's the assets that are inside or the net tangible assets or NTA, right? That's kind of the way I think about it anyway. Yeah. And... Um, that's why. So one of the things that people get confused about with listed investment companies is the um, discounted premiums. Mm. So people say it's trading at a discount to NTA, or it's trading at a premium to NTA. So can you maybe ex- explain those things? Yes. Yeah, so the underlying assets are one thing, but the interesting thing about listed investment companies is once they initially list, so they raise their capital at the start. Say they want a hundred million dollars. All these investors love whatever the company is raising the money, apply for their unit, uh, sorry, shares, and they list. And they buy everything as per their mandate on the first week. Mm -hmm. And then the money is actually locked in for the company itself. So they don't have to worry about the liquidity of whether the investors want to buy or sell on the outside. They can just get to work investing the money for you. Mm -hmm. On the outside, so from the retail investor point of view, you can actually buy and sell the shares at any it could trade at any price really um even if the underlying uh, value of the share is really only two dollars fifty um, mm-hmm. the market might believe that this is a fantastic company it's run by great people i'm prepared to pay two dollars eighty yep but it's only actually worth two dollars fifty but i think long term it's going to be worth more so there's more demand and pushes up the price so you can pay a premium mm-hmm. and alternatively you can pay a discount so the it might be a lesser known company so i've seen that with licks that have um they're smaller they're lesser known they haven't really spent any money on marketing maybe they're actually performing badly and uh people are anticipating even worse performance so it might be trading at a discount to the uh, actual value of the the shares underneath um or it just might just might be going for a rough patch or licks might be out of favor at the mm-hmm. time and everyone just wants to get out so people are prepared to sell their shares in this company for less than they're actually worth mm. okay so let's just break that down a bit and use an example um i found that uh i interviewed someone called tony hansen who's an investor from sydney uh, runs a fund called egp capital and he said one of the best investments he had made during the gfc was in listed investment companies 
And what he saw was that the listed investment company's share price was 60% of the value of the shares inside the portfolio or inside mm. the listed investment company. So what he effectively was seeing was that if he bought the Lix shares, he was getting a dollar's worth of the actual shares that are inside the portfolio for 60 cents. So mm. 60 cents on the dollar, as many value investors would say. Now, he can't then go and say, hey, I want my dollar. What he has to do is he has to write out the share price and hope that the discount or the mm. difference between the share price and the value of the shares inside it closes over time. And like you said, that tends to happen with good performance. So if the rest of the market thinks, oh, the, you know, that the person that manages that listed investment company is going mm. to do a bit better in the future, I'm willing to pay a bit more. Or if the um, listed investment company's management team start to do more marketing, so they might put out a monthly letter saying, hey, things aren't as bad. Um, why don't you come and invest in our shares? And you're getting all this exposure to a dollar's worth of shares for 60 cents. Yeah. Then eventually it goes to 61, 62, all the way up to mm. maybe And you often see, see jumps in licks after they have a big shareholder conference or presentation or meeting because they, they get everyone excited about it mm. and everyone starts to push up the, the price um, and then starts to trade at a premium. Yeah, they do, indeed. So th you, you touched on a point earlier on, which is that people put their money in at the start. So that's the difference with an ETF. Is an ETF you put the money in as you go. So you, you when you invest the money, you're actually getting exposure. The person that runs the ETF will go out and get those shares yeah. and have them as you, kind of like your yeah. shares. You don't actually see them in your account. You just see the ETF, but they're getting it for you. Mm. And that's what an ETF does. So and they can create and redeem as many units of that ETF that's it. as needed. Yeah, it's like unlimited, right? Yeah. Whereas with a lick, the money goes in at the start and the original shareholders get shares back at a dollar. So mm. a dollar for every dollar that was invested. Yeah. Now, I think the key question here is what does the person that, or the company that manages this listed investment company get? And the answer is always is they get some pretty hefty fees. Yeah. So one of the things that um, most people don't realize about Licks is that the investment management agreements, so the company that, for example, if I gave you that $10,000 earlier on, you might have an agreement to manage that money for a cert certain period of time. Mm. And that might be five years, it might be 10 years. Yeah. And if you think about it in the, in the scheme of things, you could be just a terrible investor, mm. but you've got a contract. And unless the, the company pays you out of that contract, you're going to be continually investing yeah. that money and you're going to be collecting very and generous fees. And I've got fees. my funds locked in. They're locked I don't in. have any risk of any redemptions of um, new money coming in because it's all locked in. Yep. The, the buying and the selling of the company happens outside of my concern. Yeah, that's it. it. That happens on the ASX. Yeah. You as the investor, you as the investment manager... Don't really have to yeah, worry so, about that. And generally, licks do have higher higher fees than mm -hmm. maybe some of the comparable ETFs and yeah. things like that. So they lock in potentially a 1%, 2% per annum management fee for a 10-year period. And there's usually performance fees as well if they uh, achieve above a certain benchmark. Mm -hmm. And this is a good thing that you touch on there with the fees. It's, it's important to know the difference. If you compare ETF fees to lick fees, you're not comparing apples to apples. Mm. Sometimes there are fees inside of those things that are a lot different. Yeah. And so, you know, you're actually looking at a company, whereas technically you're looking at a trust if you're in yeah. an ETF. So there's slightly different fees. But it would be fair to say on average that ETFs are cheaper. Well, they tend to be yeah. cheaper. And uh, e but ETFs yeah. have a sort of a different role. Like listed investment companies are usually trying to outperform mm -hmm. their benchmark and you're paying this company, which are employing staff, buildings and everything like that, uh, to outperform. True. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas an whether ETF they is... do or they don't outperform the benchmark, well, to them it, it's all locked in. But that that's usually why they're aiming to. Yeah. They, so that going back to our ETF uh, episode and managed funds episode, licks are definitely more active than yeah. ETFs. So they they tend to be actively managed, and whereas an ETF is kind of just like algorithmic. Money comes in, money buys X shares. Yeah. Um, and that's just the way they work. But licks are definitely, you get that expertise mm. when you buy into, well, quote unquote expertise yeah. when you buy into a lick. Some fund managers are better than others, of course. But that's kind of one of the reasons you'd buy in. Mm. Another, we seem to have beaten up licks a bit, but another really good reason or a compelling reason you would buy a lick is for frank, franking credits. Yeah. So the comp company itself generates franking credits and it invests, typically if it's investing in Australian shares, for example, it's also going to generate franking credits mm. from the dividends that it receives in the portfolio. So you, you have some licks in Australia that pay out pretty generous dividends and franking credits with those. And the good thing about some of the licks for 
investors is they do they can smooth out the income mm. over volatile periods so even you don't plan on say you're buying your lick to provide for your retirement income and you have no plans to sell it the company can actually retain some of the income on years that the income's mm. up and then actually use that to smooth out the years where the income might have dropped yeah that's and that's in contrast to an um so a listed investment trust or a trust that has to distribute income, mm. uh, a company can hold on to it. It can almost like put it in the bank and then yeah. if something, say like the GFC hits and shareholders have just witnessed the actual value of their shares fall considerably, they might say, well, hey, we're going to pay a generous dividend year yeah. b- this year because we know the and market so has been volatile. And you've got a stable income. And there's some really, there's like 50-year-old licks in Australia yeah. that have a history and investors love them for that reason that they are slow and steady. They're not there to do anything crazy, but they give you a slow and steady uh, regular income over the investment. Mm. And that's why it is quite a popular investment for some investors. Yeah, and I think one of the really compelling things, again, about list investment companies is, so it's like, um, it's a it's a, it's a catch-22. As an investor, you have locked-in capital. So you mentioned mm. that earlier on, the money's stuck inside. But by the same token, the money is stuck inside. So if you take a long-term investing approach and you back the investment manager to do the right thing they can invest without the worry of what money's coming in and out of a managed fund and all that sort of stuff day to day or an etf so if you run a managed fund you have to worry about flows what we call fund flows so money coming into the fund money going out you constantly worry about your job and Mm -hmm. so you're always trying to make your results look better than what they might be and yeah and a managed fund might be forced to buy and sell assets at the exact wrong time Mm. so in gfc sort of scenario when everyone's piling out of the investment the fund manager has to has to sell yeah absolutely Um, and it could be selling at the worst yeah. possible time, like you said, selling really cheap shares or buying really mm. expensive shares. And I guess licks give fund managers a way to invest in illiquid assets. Maybe, I don't know, what are we talking about? Office buildings, anything. Property. Yeah, thing, assets that a normal investor wouldn't be able to access on their own. But assets that you don't want a fund manager trying to sell on your behalf mm-hmm. when the market's at the bottom. So that is one advantage of that. And there is, um, I think there's a hedge fund in the UK at the moment that's having a bit of trouble uh, because they, uh, they, I think they're more of a managed fund style, but they have quite a lot in the liquid assets. And suddenly they've been underperforming. Everyone's trying to redeem their money and they've sold most of their liquid assets. They're stuck with the illiquid assets and uh, hmm. they've actually had to freeze redemptions from so the So people funds. can't get their money out. Yeah. yeah, and they're having to shift the portfolio because suddenly the whole portfolio is stuck in the liquid assets. So, mm. um, yeah, that is... Yeah, I've, so in my... In a former life, when I was a funds researcher, uh, we would see that. So we would still see companies or funds, this is managed funds from the GFC, that were still frozen like five years later, because the whatever was inside the portfolio couldn't be sold. Yeah. So that that stuff happens. And with licks, I guess you don't have that's not as big of a risk. Yeah. One of the things that people that invest in licks will point to as an added benefit is that if the lick is terrible, then you can have a vote, I guess, to dissolve the company. Mm. And then say, going back to the example earlier on, if you've got $0.60 cents in the dollar, so the assets inside the lick are worth a dollar, but it's only trading at $0.60. Cents. If you get a good enough investor or a big enough investor to convince everyone else to vote against mm. the company and, and dissolve it, what you can do is you can actually crystallize the value of the investments inside. So what I mean by that is you buy it for $0.60, cents, then you petition all the other shareholders, the company gets closed down and then you get given your dollar's worth of mm. assets. So it kind of puts a flaw on the worst case scenario. Mm. But once again, the value of the assets inside the portfolio can bounce all over the place. So you yeah. just, you've got to hope and expect that the value of a dollar is going to stay a dollar. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've labored on these points a bit for a bit too long, but um, just a couple of things to tidy up. Um, how do you buy them? How do you buy licks? Yeah, just through your broker. Um, all the large financial institutions have options available so you set up your account just the same way you'd buy shares or etfs you can just buy your lick and it's usually a three-letter stock code Mm -hmm. um the good the thing to check out first before you go buying any licks is looking at the company's website and looking at their net what the actual value of the stock is so their net asset value and then comparing that to what it's actually is it a dollar Mm-hmm. on the website and it's currently trading at a dollar 10 so trading at a premium are you prepared to pay a 10 percent premium yep. 
on that company. Do you think it's worth it? Or alternatively, it might be at 60 cents and wow, massive discount. You're getting mm. the basket of shares on sale. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, do you own any licks? I have. I don't think I do at the moment. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't. Um, so one of the thing, one of the issues that you may find is that all the best licks trade at a, a premium. Yeah. So you've got to be prepared to pay more. And they've got a very loyal and stable client base. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of the largest, if you have a look around Licks in Australia, um, definitely they've got a lot of supporters and uh, they don't ever plan on selling them. Yeah, so it's very hard to get your hands on some of them. Mm -hmm. And generally the better Licks are keeping the market informed regularly, so it's harder to take advantage of any momentary falls. But um, one of the things, one of the points that people would like to make also is that you should only ever buy Licks at a discount. I mean, mm-hmm. you should only ever buy them for less than the value of the assets inside that the lick. And the reason that they make that point is that there's fees. There's a friction with fees. So you have, you know, a 1% fee plus a performance fee. You should be paying less than what the price is on market because mm-hmm. you could just go out and buy them yourselves. Uh, so, I mean, I don't really buy into that. I think, pardon the pun, I, I think um, if you are a truly, truly long-term investor, you can afford to pay a little bit more yeah. than the, the NTA or the net asset value. But obviously you want to be realistic with mm. that. Uh, one thing you, you mentioned going to the website, another thing I do while you're on the website is just look at performance mm. and also pay attention to how they report performance because some of them report it without fees and without costs. Yeah, and is it, is it pre-tax, post-tax? Is it pre-tax or post-tax? So it's different reporting to an ETF. It's just important that if you are comparing multiple licks side by side, you, you're comparing to the same metrics. Yeah. And then don't obviously go and compare a, a listed investment company that has 20% shares and 80% bonds with one that has the opposite. Yeah. You want to make sure that you're comparing a similar strategy across the licks. Um, so yeah, it's just make sure once again, you're comparing apples to apples, strategy, fees, um, and you know try and purchase them at a discount if you can, but that's not always the case. Uh, anything else, Kate? Have we missed anything? Did you? I think my big question for you, Ooh. as the the expert here, with <laughs> the rise in exchange traded funds, do you think licks are a dying investment breed option? Um, well, you made the point earlier on about uh, some of these licks have been around for many, many, many years. Mm. I don't see that changing. Yep. So I think at the very least we will continue to see more. Of the same, mm. in terms of the the good list investment companies will hang around. Yeah, some of the bad ones will hang around too. <laughs> Probably for not as long, but they'll hang around. I don't think we'll see as many come to market, mm. and we definitely won't see the explosive growth growth that we have seen with ETFs because now you're seeing more ETFs um, become actively managed, yeah. which are very similar to a lick. The only difference is that you can get in and out. Mm. So if we see more of that, that will be a genuine alternative to licks. But I don't think they're going anywhere. There's a few reasons. The incentives are so good across the board. So you've got the incentives of the investment manager. They want to stay in business. So they're going to keep, um, you know, they're going to, it's agency there. They're going, yeah. to, they're going to want to do the best thing for them. The shareholders, like you said, have, have enjoyed dividends. So it's a better structure for dividends, more generally, I guess. Yeah. Um, and the third thing is most of the shareholders are loyal. Mm. So they've been, some of these licks have been on the market for decades. So I don't see any of that's going to, any, I don't see any change in the horizon. But I just don't think we'll see as great a proportion of them in, say, millennial share yeah. share portfolios, for example, compared to ETFs at least. Mm. Okay, we've included some resources oh, yes. on listed investment companies in the show notes. How so to you money have website. A look. And Check Owen it out. has a video comparing ETFs and licks, so that's I, something for yes, you. Did, do I? <laughs> he can't even remember. He I recorded should, that one. You know, just getting behind the camera so often these days. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, actually, yes, just checking that. And it is true. I can confirm that there was a video of me doing that. I did find it on the weekend. So, <laughs> okay. so <laughs> yeah, definitely watch that. It's a must watch. Yes. Uh, How to money website for everything else. Uh, some tutorials and um, they can also lodge questions there. Yeah. Yep. Questions via howtomoney.online or RAS Finance. Yep. RASFinance.com. On, you're on Twitter. Yes. At How to Money Australia yep. and Instagram. Cool. Yeah, Instagram, good one. I'm on Twitter at Owen Rask. And I'm on Instagram as well, but I have like a hundred followers. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Owen's Owen's next step is dominating I, Instagram. I think um I think my Instagram has a photo of a coffee, uh, one chart, like a f- investing chart, and 
I think you have a, a rabbit. A rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, one of my pet rabbits. So definitely get on there for all the latest rabbit picks. Until next week, Kate, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Owen.